Hi everyone, my name is David. I'm a life coach and I'm here to make videos to try to help you guys heal, recover, and grow from all kinds of different trauma. This is a weekly Q&A. Uh, if you got a question, just go down below in the comment section, ask me, I'll answer this next Monday. I do this every Monday. Um, all I ask is please, everyone leave your locations. I hope everyone's doing well out there, doing better, feeling better, growing, you know, two steps forward and one step back. I think that's a question from someone today. but. Um, Expect bad days, expect good days, celebrate the good days, okay, and comfort yourself on the bad days and look for support from other people, okay? Um, welcome new new subscribers, welcome new viewers. Um, if you think that I am helping you in any way, that this is beneficial and you think it could benefit anybody else, could you please support me by subscribing to the channel, voting up or down, thumbs up or down, commenting down below, things like this. It really, really helped me and help what I'm doing. Thank you very much. So I like to recommend something every week for you guys. Um, mostly, I think lately it's been books. I got another book, but this is a really good one. I, I might have recommended this before. I apologize if I have to anybody else who's already heard me recommend this, but it's worth recommending again. It's a good book. Um, and, and recently somebody recommended it to me again and I was like, oh yeah, I know it's a really good book. So I'm just going to recommend it again because, well, here's the title, The Covert Passive Aggressive Narcissist, Recognizing the Traits and Finding Healing After Hidden Emotional and Psychological Abuse by Debbie Mertza. It's a fantastic book. And for any of you out there who've dealt with passive aggressive people, narcissists specifically, it is it's awful. It's just awful. It's 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 a game you don't know you're playing with somebody. They're they're not open. They're not vulnerable. They don't they don't come clean with you. They don't tell you things right away. They don't tell maybe ever. They hold grudges. They they do paybacks and revenges and they it's just it's just it's awful. And and I remember I dated somebody for a short term who was really passive aggressive, and it it, it was mind boggling. It, 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 and and anything that hurts and is confusing with people you care about and you don't know, it just it it, it, it can actually cause shame. So so I recommend this book to anybody <clears throat> who's had somebody that's covert uh, passive aggressive narcissist, and you know it could be a friend or anybody, but specifically if you have a parent. A mother or father who is passive aggressive like this, um, this book would really help you because the more you understand it, the less shame and guilt is involved. Okay, it's healing. So <clears throat> please, you can you can find this book if you want it down in the description box. I'll put a link to Amazon for that, and I'm seeing it right here, Kindle 9.99. And I think it might be available in other forms. I'm not sure, but you can follow the link if you like and check it out. Thank you. And let me know always what you guys think. For anybody who reads it, I'd love to hear your review. So let's get started with the uh, questions. There's a lot. There's good ones. They're always good, but these are really good ones. And uh, man, the theme. The theme is straight addictions and grieving. You know, addic dependency and, and grieving are our exes, our abusers. Um, so I hope that some of these questions can help you guys understand. Maybe it's it's some questions that all of you ask yourself and just haven't asked me. Um, so let's get into it. First question is from Dave, or I'm sorry, R.H. Hi, David. Watching from PA, Pennsylvania, I'm guessing. How does someone get over feeling as though the relationship failure was their own fault? I believe I was with a narcissist and I've heard from even his own family members how this is just how he is. He's always been manipulative, but even with no contact, I find myself replaying over and over different interactions and scenarios where I may have been the wrong one. I realize nobody's perfect, but I think this is messing with my head and preventing me from really getting over it. We don't get over it. We, we go through it. We go through it. These are experiences we need to have, obviously. Um, we heal from it, okay? I'm sorry that this is how you're feeling. And, and, and this is why talk therapy is so important. I know I push this so much with you guys, but there's just so much of you don't do it. And then you ask me, how do I fix this and how do I fix that? Talk therapy. Um, we need to talk about these things. It, it, 
low self-worth and shame and things like this, <clears throat> they follow these traumatic, abusive relationships, okay? We, after we were neglected and after we're abused, and especially after it's over, we, we, we grieve, and it doesn't matter if you hated them or loved them or if you know, they're, you know they're bad for you. Codependent relationships, full enmeshment all the time with this person, cutting out everybody else in your life, losing a sense of yourself in this relationship with this person is a major, major loss when it's over, okay? It, it, it fills, it's a huge void. It took up time and space, this relationship and this person. So it doesn't matter how, really how your feelings are too much about them afterwards. We all grieve. There's a certain amount of grief that follows this. And when we grieve, we tend to introspect after we lose something bad enough. We, we tend to introspect, and that causes depression. And, and that's what this is, ruminating, thinking about the past. Um, what did you say? How did you word it? <clears throat> replaying over and over different interactions and scenarios where I, may have, where I may have been the wrong one, ruminating. All of you guys, to some degree, right, can relate with that and know what that is. And so <clears throat> we're not really processing this effectively. Okay, we're kind of stuck in this because you don't know what to do. And, and there isn't much to do about the past. We can't change it. We can't control people now. And so we have to start processing our emotions and, and this entire experience and really learning what happened. Really, really learning what happened. And when people come to me and say, I love my abuser, I miss them. I want more abuse? No, I just, I don't know why. I, I don't, I don't, I know they're bad for me. I don't really like them either. <laughs> yeah. So <clears throat> this is dependency. This is an addiction as well. Toxic relationships become addictive. Okay, that's what dependency means, emotionally dependent. And like all, the, like all addictions and grief, we have loss and we need to replace. We need to replace the loss and we need to replace the addiction. Okay, replace it with something, hopefully something healthy. <clears throat> Some people replace it with other addictions. They try to date right away a new person like a narcissist does, right? They're, they, they're dependent on people big time and they use you up and throw you out and go right to the next one. They, can't, they don't be by themselves. No, 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 no. They're too dependent and they don't want to feel uh, the grief and, and shame and things like this. They, they will feel those things too. They can. And so they replace it with new addictions, a new person, a new drug. A lot of you guys are like heroin addicts, ex-junkies. That's why you feel that way, okay? So I hope I answered your question. Um, you know, none of us were perfect in a failed relationship. Failed relationships just cause depression and then grief, or grief and then depression. And none of us were perfect. And, you know, we, we, there might be behaviors and things we did do that we're not proud of. It, it's not who was right, who was wrong. We gotta, we gotta stop thinking that way, right? We, they were unhealthy, unhealthy, and healthy people don't date unhealthy people. So we're not, we're not healthy either. And so let's process this stuff. And it sounds like you need to do it with somebody else because this is the damage that's caused if we do it by ourselves or try to. This, this, this um, ruminating and, and and never really getting anywhere right that that in itself can cause more anxiety more depression more shame we start becoming uh we start not accepting our feelings and not accepting our thoughts and stuff like this and they become confusing to us we've experienced a lot of um, cognitive dissonance from lying to ourselves and lying letting believing their lies and protecting our addictions and our dependency so there's a lot of stuff to process here. You're asking me, you know, how do, I, how do I cure mental problems I'm having? And we do that with professionals, okay? Thank you. Hope I answered your question. Keep asking me if I have not. And that goes for all of you. Please keep asking me. Asking me, asking me. Make sure I understand. Make sure you understand, okay? Thank you. <clears throat> Next one is from Lucy Mix in the United Kingdom. Hi, Lucy. 
My friend is 42. In the last year, I've noticed how unhealthy the relationship is between him and his parents. He feels out of control. They turn up at his house three times a day and ring him constantly, only 12 times in one hour. Once, 12 times in one hour. <clears throat> his mother is so negative and sends him nasty messages on the evening. Then we'll text him the first thing and say, good morning. I've told him he needs to say no to them and stop answering the door phone so much. But he says if he does that, he gets a lot of backlash and they ignore him anyway. He can't push them too far because they've made him dependent for financial and health reasons. Also, his mum will buy him stuff. I always know if you're English if you say mum. Uh, buy him stuff he doesn't need. And when he refuses it, she calls him nasty names. He has no boundaries whatsoever. How does he go about trying to build these boundaries back up and gain some privacy, respect, and control of his own life? You rock, David. Lucy from you. Thanks, Lucy. This is going to be a long process for him when he's ready to do this. He may not be ready, okay? We have to make, or when we make major, major life changes, he's 42 years old, his personality's pretty set, okay? His brain's been operating like this for 40 years. So we need to change his entire architecture of his brain, his behavior patterns, thought patterns, totally build up his self-esteem, self-worth, self-awareness. His parents are codependent and dependent on him just as much as he's been dependent on them. So he needs to really, this, has, this is a huge commitment, he needs to be committed to it. So that, that takes big, big, big changes and we invest and invest and invest and he needs a ton of support. First step, get away from them, right? First step is get away from them, okay? You, you, can't, you can't cure this stuff or help this stuff while you're in it you have to step out that door Lucy and and in, in situations like this for people that we care about we have to be careful we're not enabling behaviors okay just like most people in borderlines life are enabling them if the borderline isn't getting help okay right um, and, and if we get away from bad or good again here your friend is very sick, awfully sick. He's t completely dependent. He can't take care of himself, right? He's lowest self-worth, low self-esteem, all these things. He's not healthy, Lucy. So <clears throat> the help that he needs, you can't give to him, okay? We can be supportive friends, right? But what are you supporting him? How are you supporting him right now? If he's not, if he's still with his parents and still being abused daily, and he's still sick from it. How are you helping him now? Just be weary of that. Try to be aware of that, okay? A lot of times he, he, he might just start calling up on you every day and blowing steam and uh, 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 but then never doing something about it. Okay? So we got to be careful. <clears throat> this is something that he needs to decide, that he needs to commit to. And he needs to take that first step out the door. It, when I if if I have people that I love and care about and they're being awfully abused, it's the same thing to me as them just hurting themselves. I'm not accusing people of being abused as doing it themselves. I'm just saying it's same or similar to me in my interpersonal life. I have somebody I love. I cannot sit there and watch them hit themselves in the head every day. Right? I can't. I'd just be like, Oh my God, what are you doing? Like, I don't stop that, please. And there's help available for that, so I expect you to go get the help. If you're not going to go get the help and you keep hitting your head, I can't be exposed to that. My, my, my self and my life is more important. It's worth more than that. And have people in, that don't want to get help and be sick. So he's 42 years old. There's help available for him. He needs to get it. Instead of you, his friend, asking me what he should do. Does that make sense? Because other than go get help from a professional, what else am I going to say? I'm just going to tell you to tell him to do things that he probably won't do on his own, right? That's it. I mean, you, you probably say, you probably come up, try to come up with, you know, try this, do this. Maybe if you do this, and he's not doing it, probably, okay? And that's where codependency starts coming in, <clears throat> right? You tell him over and over and over, and he just doesn't do it, and you keep telling him, and you told him so, and <laughs> that's codependency, Okay? Hope that helps. If if it doesn't, you don't understand me. Ask, give me more details. Ask me more stuff. Okay. Thank you. Little soul 
says, I created a playlist with your CPTSD videos. I will definitely keep adding more to the playlist. Thank you, and thank you. I've asked, uh, I asked a lot of that. A lot of times I ask you guys to do that. One way to support me is you on your YouTube channel, you just save my video and save it to a playlist, title it whatever you want. These kinds of things makes my videos more active. So it's something you guys can do by put, really supporting me by pushing a couple buttons, okay? Thank you so much. Appreciate you for that. Your support is great. Uh, Sharon. Sharon from Tasmania. Hi, Sharon. Sharon's got a Tasmanian devil that won't leave her alone. Good day, David. It's Sharon from Tasmania. I'm asking for advice on my next move, please. The psychopath X that just won't stop and in and out of ideas. This man despised me, and although I'm not in life or his sight, I seem to be forever on his mind, and sadly, he's so covert that I can't prove to police he's still contacting me. He's so devious. I know it's him. Tired of changing numbers. Police here have no comprehension of this type of abuse. There's not even a support system for survivors of rape like me. It's sad, really. I've even told them that it's okay. Just remember me when I'm a statistic. Any idea what else I can do? I, I just want this behind me where I left it. Thank you. To my fellow survivors on here, keep going because it ends up being a beautiful journey of self-discovery. I promise that because regardless of this, I'm so happy and I'm free. You're so happy that you're free. That's great. I'm glad that you ended it, <clears throat> ended your, your what you said here that way. So, uh, Sharon, I'm sorry. Awful. It must be awful. I'm not going to tell you I know how you feel, even if I had people do similar things, but um, it's it's terrible. It really is. Um, none of this is new, but for some reason, so much of it seems to be new to police departments, judicial systems, courts. And it's not. It's not. None of this stuff is new. Except maybe, you know, cybercrime. That's new. But uh, it seems like the only people that ever will do something about this is somebody who's been through it, right? Um I don't want to be a broken record. What I tell everybody in similar situations who are being stalked, who are being cyber-stalked, who are being slandered and, 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 and smeared and all this, people obsessed with other people. <clears throat> um, document everything that happens. Write it down and write down the date and time stamp and what happened and most importantly how you feel. You may be doing this stuff. You may think this is pointless, but it's not. Keep filing police reports over and over and over and over again, okay? a lot of, Something that a lot of people don't know that... I don't know what they call them in Tasmania, but here we have lawyers, legal men, lawmen, okay? And they will force police officers to take action. I've done this. Okay, it, it works. That does work. You know, especially if you're in a foreign, you know, someone's harassing you from a foreign country, right? They're not going to care about you. You're not even a citizen, right? And so, it, but you get a lawyer to start pushing them, they will. All of a sudden, they care. That's some advice I have. Keep filing those police reports. Don't give up, all right? Um, and, and we'd be extreme. I know people that have gone through this for years and they don't know what to do, but I can't delete my Facebook page. I really like my Facebook page. So like this, like, okay, well, you know, um, and be careful of anything you might be doing. I don't think you are at all. I'm not, please, I'm not accusing you. But sometimes we're not aware of stuff we're doing, you know, like just even answering the phone or answering an email, leave me alone every week, you know, leave me alone, stuff like that. I, I, I know you're not doing that, but... It's just, it's an awful situation, and we, we've got to have supportive people always when we go through this. Anybody attacking us, stalking us, stuff like this, threatening, we've got to have support. And that's friends, that's family, that, that's people that we hire, okay? I hope you've healed from the relationship. I know you say you're so happy you're free, but the more we heal from this relationship, the less stuff like that does bother you, okay? Other than that, good luck. I'm sorry. I wish I could just cure it for you. I wish I could stop every scumbag that does this. It, it's just disgusting and it's sick and it's just, you know, nasty for society. Especially with all the cyber crime and cyber bullying going on. It's so gross and it just spreads. 
it just spreads there's so many people that are lost and don't have morals but they just believe this crap and want to attack other people because they've been hurt too in their life and they don't want to heal from it so I don't know how much that helps I don't know what else to tell you I really don't I'm sorry um, <clears throat> but learn how to protect yourself process these things the more you heal from this relationship the less scary this person becomes and and just know what you want to do if anything he does happens just go through the scenarios practice say it out loud talk to somebody else okay I'm sorry Sharon I couldn't help you more maybe read the book I recommended it's about covert narcissists thank you keep asking questions Sharon uh, where are we I'm going to stop part one here we're out of time and I'm going to start part two you guys I'll, I'll have it right out um, I used to be doing I used to be putting the parts out every half an hour I'm going to put them closer together now but if you could again subscribe vote up or down please just kick, uh, click a couple buttons I try to do this to help pe save people's lives and, and mental health so you know people are committing suicide every day from PTSD so you can save some lives if you help promote my videos I think I'm hoping thank you love yourself first I'll see you in part two bye bye